Autonomous technology is becoming increasingly important in all walks of life. We've all heard about autonomous cars and you know the move towards autonomous technology is coming. So the AI element of Formula Student is becoming as a result of that increasingly important. These universities, five of them in 2021, will be pitching their AI cars against each other in a series of challenges. And this one's for the gamers. They're actually using Xbox controllers to control the cars. Now, this is a new emerging technology and if you can imagine Imagine the amount of thought that has to go into putting these machines together. It's not all plain sailing, it doesn't always go to plan, but it is fascinating. Esme is in the thick of the action as this test event here at Silverstone gets underway. I am, and I'm joined by Finn from Oxford Brooks. Finn, thank you for joining me. Do you just want to tell me a little bit about what you've just seen? Oh, thank you very much, Esme. Um, we have just completed our dynamic test, which is one of the three tests that we have to complete before uh, we are allowed to do the dynamic events at FSAI. Um, our team has completed that, uh, which is an autonomous demo, and now we are headed over to the skid pad to test our skid pad control uh, methodology. And before the interview, you just said that the skid pad is kind of one of the hardest. Um, uh, yes, so, the, so the, the, the skid pad is a unique uh, challenge to uh, FSAI teams. Uh, the fact that you have to do two complete loops of one side of the eight, and then two complete loops on the other side, and drive out of the eight. Unlike this track here, which you can kind of you can uh, you can ask, you can have a look at what the boundaries are. Um, the skid pad isn't, and that's where it kind of is a complexity. And I don't think our team has actually ever uh, accomplished or even tried to uh, do the skid pad. So we are excited to see it going. And AI, obviously, there's no driver within the car. So can you just explain a little bit how the car is controlled and how it can kind of differentiate so the... between the track and the cones? So the, so the car comes as standard from the IMEC-E, we have, it's, uh, we have a GPS and an IMU and a Z camera, a stereo camera that is already on board in the car. Um, the teams then are allowed to add any sensors that we wish, but the mounting has to be approved by uh, the imec -E. um, The challenge comes is, is, is integrating everything and is running a full autonomous stack uh, that can compete and do the missions. Um, and it, you, know, you, you have to, you have to recognise the cones, you have to recognise where you are on the track, you then have to decide what your next action is and then you have to decide the appropriate uh, movement and measurement that you need in order to achieve your goal. And we've noticed that there's actually two teams here from Oxford Brooks. Is there any kind of rivalry or do you help um, each other out within the paddock? Oh, we help us out as much as we can. Our, we are at home, we are next to each other. We share tools, we share resources. I spent three hours 3D printing for the AI, for the EV team a week ago. Um, no, we are one, tree, one team, one dream, as um, our, um, EV, our EV team lead says, and we uh, try to help each other out as much as possible because at the end, at, we are on a four-year trajectory to combine and to have our first ADS car. So it's valuable that we share resources and fair, share information, and that's what makes the OBR team so strong. And in terms of goals from the weekend, do you, what are you looking to get out of it? Are you looking to, to win overall, or are you looking to kind of move forward in the steps to making a more sustainable future for AI? Um, I think the main, t the main objective is to kind of have a good event, if that makes sense. Is, is, this is the second time the dynamic, te the dynamic event has been running since, um, since four years ago. It was the first time that we've, we've had an autonomous car here. The, the aim is to kind of get as many teams to work at, go through the track as possible. We've, we've been trying to help Bath in Edinburgh. We hosted them for a week last week. Um, we just want to see as many teams compete and actually it's more about, okay, what can everyone do? And actually that's what I think we should be focusing on this, this premature stage. We're not racing for millimetres just yet. We're, mace, we're racing for the start line. And I think this, this year we're going to have a few teams and it's going to be awesome to see what everyone can do. And in terms of racing, what's the top speed of the car? Because we've noticed in the past few days it has been able to gain some speed. Uh, the top speed in testing has been uh, 65 kilometres per hour. Um, but that is, that's only because they were only doing it over a uh, 75 metre uh, track length. But it is untested of how fast they can go. The real, the limiting factor is the computational power. And that's where the skill comes if you, is how complex your systems are and how much uh, computing power they need. That's where, you know, that's where you'll find the toughest, the highest speed comes, comes into it. And we've noticed that there is five teams that have entered an AI car this year. Do you think year on year we will see more and more cars being entered into this category? 
I think we will see more and more cars in, in, in this category. There's, there's quite a lot of attention and interest actually what the teams can do. I think also it's a great entry level uh, event to FS to form your student and and you'll find a lot more computing students uh, going in. I think a lot I think we've only got two mechanical engineers on our team. The majority are computing and computing robotics and we've even got people that are doing um, statistics as well. So it's it's all encompassing, it's a very diverse, diverse uh, event that we can do. And speaking of events, we wish you the best of luck for this event. Thank you very much. I do like a Mustang Fastback, especially an early 60s one. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be driving this car, and in fact, no human will. This, believe it or not, and I know it doesn't look like the ones you just saw out there on the, on the test pan, this is an autonomous vehicle. Cranfield University Advanced Vehicle Engineering Centre basically built this to be the first autonomous vehicle to go around the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is quite incredible. It's got electric motors controlling the throttle, the steering and the braking systems. You can just see there's a control panel in here. And then it uses GPS to follow a predefined route. Now, it won't detect objects, so it can't go off on its own and, and drive around the paddock, for example, but it does completely autonomously drive and follow a defined route. You can see the GPS sensors here on the front wings. So not only is AI coming through to Formula Student in terms of the uh, autonomous racing cars, but we're now turning classic muscle cars into autonomous driving vehicles. That is terrifying, but brilliant. Although most of the challenge in the AI department is the software and the algorithms and the, the robotics part of the project, there is still a mechanical element, of course, because the cars are powered by batteries and everything on the battery and the charging environment has to be done here in this end garage at Silverstone. As you can see, two of our most formidable mechanical engineering universities, Bath and Oxford Brooks, are in here getting over a few technical um, issues, shall we say, after scrutineering. So I think Ross from Bath University can just tell us a little bit about what's happening in here. You can see the scrutineers around, and the scrutineers at Formula Student are not here to catch anybody out. It's a real collaborative spirit. They're helping work around problems. They're maybe suggesting new ways of doing things, because this is all new technology, and it's a new part of Formula Student that some of the universities who have previously done very well in the, uh, the regular Formula Student competition, are getting their heads around and really uh, building from scratch. So Ross, you guys just about passed scrutineering, but you've got a few problems with the, the charging part of the car, is it? Yeah, so um, basically what happens is um, you, when you go through scrutineering, especially with the Aki, they do, um, you basically have to explain exactly how the accumulator is built. Um, and that's like a really, really in-depth sort of, you've really got to know your knowledge and really got to be confident um, in what you're talking about. Uh, and then what they do is they go, okay, okay we'll plug the Aki into the charger, um, and then they get you to do a full charging procedure and make sure that all of the, um, uh, the charger can you know, do all the different things like shutting down the car so we're not high voltage anymore, which is obviously the really dangerous bit. Yeah. Um, and essentially, we sort of failed right at the, uh, well, not necessarily failed, but right at the last hurdle, which meant that we couldn't obviously um, be able to, we can't go HV in the car. Um, so what we're doing is we're just solving that issue and then hopefully we'll be able to um, get on the track and get racing. A lot of pressure on your shoulders this weekend because Bath is a formidable name in Formula Student. Yeah. You guys have, have done the business over the years in, in the regular competition side. So AI is new to everybody. Yeah. Um, are you hoping to be up there running at the front? Are you, do you have no idea where you're going to be? It's exciting, but yeah. do you have any idea where you're going to be in the pack? Well, so we're, we're feeling pretty confident. Um, as soon as we get over this issue, we know that the rest of our systems, uh, they're looking really, really good this year, um, especially because we're actually running a, a 2 YV vehicle. We had some issues because of COVID that meant that we couldn't actually, um, we couldn't actually use uh, the vehicle that we designed last year. But we've had a solid foundation of our mech and we brought in a very solid Alex system, um, adapted in and, and, and added some bits of pieces of aero and things like that. Hopefully we can get that on the car too. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident, pretty confident this year. Best of luck Team Bath, he looks confident as well, doesn't he? You can see just how in-depth this area is. Everybody's engrossed in, in getting over these, these technical issues early on so they can get the cars running. But it's a new element of Formula Student which frankly fascinates and terrifies me at the same time because I don't know where to start with it. Um, Esme's somewhere else around here, so we'll find out if she's got any idea where to start. I do have an idea to where to start. I have been given this checklist which the teams need to go through even before they can lay a spanner on the car and before they can get out on track. 